So let's talk about the cream of the Space Marine Bolter battle line in Warhammer 40k. With their new and much lower points cost, did the Stone Guard veterans finally just get good? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about the cream of the Space Marine gun line with a closer look at the rules for the ranged veterans, the Stone Guard in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. In this video, we'll take a look over the models and the lore behind the units, go through their data sheet bit by bit, and talk about some buffs, synergies, and ways that you might think about fielding them on the tabletop. The Stone Guard are basically Space Marine ranged veterans, they're the pinnacle of the Bolter battle line, and basically aim to be everything that a tactical or intercessor Space Marine is on the battlefield, but more and better, a dangerous fire support force of elites to get the job done right. Their preferred method of warfare is slaying the foe from afar, being able to draw on the chapter's relic and artisan weaponry, often having relic bolt rifles with special issue ammunition or arrays of combi weapons. These guys will dominate any firefight that they're in, beat down the enemy and take the ground that they were standing on for the glory of the chapter. The new Stone Guard Resculpt were one of the new Primaris Marines for 10th edition Warhammer 40k. A monopose set of them came out in Leviathan that you'll now also be able to get in that Heroes of the Chapter box set from Games Workshop. I thought that the monopose miniatures were nice enough, but they did follow it up with a fairly nice multi-part plastic kit with some proper options on the frame with the choices to field every veteran either with a combi weapon or a stone guard bolt rifle, plus some melee weapons for the sergeant and the choice of a heavy bolter or a pyre cannon in the arms of the heavy. The box set cost £37.50, $60 or €50 Euros from Games Workshop, a little bit light on the points per dollar sort of front, only 1.5 is a bit on the lower side for Space Marines. In general though, I think they considered at least fairly nice miniatures, Quite a cool update compared with the previous Firstborn kit. I thought it was quite a nice touch that there was some evidence of older marks of armour being incorporated into the unit. Kind of makes sense as a veteran unit, drawing on the best relic gear that the chapter has to offer. I think they were quite well received. Though I feel like if you want Stone Guard Marines on the cheap, you could certainly do a bit of kit bashing from standard intercessors if you'd like. Find yourself a bunch of fancy armour plates and blinged up weaponry or purity seals and things. Maybe a few fancy loincloths and it could be quite a long way to getting a squad that looks the part already. In any case though, if you were thinking about picking up the full fat plastic kit, there's lots of places around the world that could get them at a discount. Element Games in the UK, Gap Games in Australia, War Games Portal in the USA, or Fenris Workshop in Canada. All of those are links down in the video description. Save you a good amount compared with buying from Games Workshop directly, and a small amount does go to help support All Specs Tactics as affiliate links, though it wouldn't cost you any more to buy through those. So far in 10th edition, Stone Guard have been a bit of a mixed bag. In very early 10th edition, they were kind of great. Then when the Codex Space Marines came out, they went down to being considered far more mediocre to bad. Early on in the edition, they kind of stood out as one of the many units that maybe had a bit too easy access to devastating wounds, as you could have a whole squad of them and combine them with Oath and Moment, meaning you'd be re-rolling the hit roll and wound roll to try and fish for the devastating wounds on sixes if it made sense against an enemy that had quite a high save. They also had a much more brutal special rule allowing them to double fire their weapons once per game if they slew an enemy unit which could give you a pretty massive extra flurry of damage output. Then in Codex Space Marines though they removed the wound reroll from Oath and Moment which probably was an overall sensible decision for faction balance but they also swapped out their double shoot rule once per game for a reroll wound thing that we'll get onto. And it seems that adding a fancy power fist and dropping the squad's cost down to 100 points wasn't enough to compensate for that. I guess they did get a small boost with the devastating wounds in that they are no longer affected by things that ignore mortal wounds, but still it wasn't really the best news for them. Recently though, they do seem to be looking a fair bit stronger once more. Their points cost has been dropped down to 90. And I would argue they are looking pretty credible for what they bring to the table now. If Games Workshop weren't going to buff their stats, then a solid points decrease like that was what they needed. Getting onto the unit's rules, and for your 90 points for 5 of them, or 180 per 10, you get this stat line on your Stone Guard Veteran unit. A fairly standard Space Marine Tacticus armour profile for their stat line. Previously I would have said that their durability wasn't that great for 100 points, but now they're down to 90, it's really not so bad for standard Space Marines and power armour. I still wouldn't say that they're standout durable for their cost or anything like that, but I've probably got away from the point where I'd say that they're standout fragile. And that's good news for a unit that's often going to want to be on the front of the battle line dealing damage to the enemies. Otherwise, they're basically fairly standard power armoured infantry with a Tacticus keyword. And they've got all the things that you'd expect like grenades, but don't have battle line like the regular intercessors, who I think they'll compete with to some extent. 
for their primary weapon for the veterans, you either get a combi weapon or a bolt rifle. The combi weapon is the normal profile for these without the choice between melter or plasma or anything like that. You'll get the single one shot rapid fire one gun with an anti infantry 4 plus and devastating wounds. It is perhaps a bit disappointing that the veterans only hit on a 4 plus with these though. You might hope that their marksmanship might be a little bit better with them. Otherwise, the Stone Guard Bolt Rifle is a gun with a whole load of keywords and extras. It's basically a similar sort of profile to the Intercessor Bolt Rifle. Two shots at 24 inch range at strength 4, AP minus 1 and damage 1. It gets the Assault keyword so you can advance and shoot. It gets the Heavy keyword for a plus 1 to hit if you're static. But then on top of that, it also gets Rapid Fire 1. So it means that you can get a third shot if you're within 12 inches, which is rather nice. And perhaps even more importantly, it also has Devastating Wounds as well meaning the gun's going to be at least somewhat threatening even against the very toughest stuff in the enemy army. Every veteran also gets a devastating wound bolt pistol as well, which wouldn't be used unless you're locked in combat and don't want to fall back, but I think that is still kind of fun to represent their special issue ammunition. For the damage output for four veterans with the bolt weapons, presuming you give them one either the pyre cannon or the heavy bolter, this is a breakdown of their damage output against a bunch of different targets. For this one I thought we'd do their damage output at 12 inches and assuming they're on the move. If you're either firing at greater than 12 inches or they're stationary then the bolt rifles get another big advantage which as you can see by these numbers they don't really need. Against hordes the bolt rifles do solidly better. Against intercessors is another slightly closer win for the bolt rifles. And the only class where the combis actually outperform is against the terminator armoured targets and even then it's only by a little bit like a 10% increase. Far less than the differential against any of the other targets here. Fewer shots and hitting on a 4 plus really does eat into the combi weapon damage profile, even if you are firing against infantry. In general, just based on these, I'd say that unless you happen to be fighting nothing but Terminators or other heavy toughness 5 or higher infantry in your meta, it seems like the bolt rifles are going to be the more general purpose way to go. I think that only really becomes more the case given that they might have the opportunity to stay stationary, get plus one to hit, or get the opportunity to advance and shoot, and do far better if you compare their damage output at 24 inch range rather than 12, or you happen to be fighting against something like mounted units rather than heavy infantry. Basically, I just don't really think that these are enormously well balanced, and the bolt rifles seem to be the way to go. Then to back them up, you get a heavy weapon, and here you have the choice between a heavy bolter with devastating wounds or a pyre cannon, essentially a heavy flamer profile at 12 inches with torrent, getting you d6 plus 1 auto hits at strength 6, ap1 and damage 1. Between these two I could kind of go either way, I feel like the heavy bolter is maybe the more obvious one as it just fits in quite well with what the rest of the squad wants to do most of the time, though if you are buying them a transport option and your main game plan is to try and deliver them into within 12 inches of the enemy, the pyre cannon seems fine as well. It will outcompete a regular stone guard bolt rifle or combi weapon against most targets. It could help a bit with overwatch as well if they are going to be moving forward onto midfield objectives. The range damage is definitely the main event, though it's kind of surprising that these stone guard are quite as punchy as they are in melee. You might expect them to be a little bit weedy here given that they're the ranged veterans and you've got the blade guard or vanguard to do close combat duties. But it does seem that even better than their intercessor counterparts, they should be monstrously dangerous against light infantry in close combat. 16 attacks at strength 4 AP0 will do a fair bit of work there, then backed up by a sergeant who gets an extra attack with a fancy power weapon of some sort. The fist does seem like the best bet to round the squad's damage out and give you some st high strength multi-damage attacks and just let you punch to death a few more space marines. I feel like you could be in for a whole load of damage if you, these guys do get a full turn to activate, unleash a full volley of devastating wound firepower and then charge into melee with some space marines or some lighter infantry. If you can get them there to do that then they seem like a unit that could well make their points back in a single turn of shooting and combat if the stars line up for them. Finally their special rule is stern guard focus, reroll wound rolls of 1 against oath of moment targets. This is the rule that replaced their double shoot rule, and while I would say it's worse than that, I still say it's not useless. I think it's just going to be a bit more of a situational thing, as it's maybe a little bit awkward in that it's not really quite powerful enough a rule to really want you to redistribute where you're going to be putting oath a moment for your army to try and take down. But I guess you could just see it as a nice to have if the stone guard veterans do happen to be attacking that target. When you're hitting on a 3+, plus, it's usually going to equate 
when you're hitting on a 3 plus, it's usually going to take your oath of moment from giving you a 33% damage boost up to a 56% damage boost, as you're basically getting an increase on an already increased value. It's definitely nice to have, but maybe not that much of an extra increase above what oath of moment would have given you otherwise. Still though, quite nice, they can really turn up the pressure if oath of moment is needed, and they're the ones that can try and take down a key enemy threat. Putting that together just for a rough idea of what they can do in the shooting phase, here's just some damage output for a unit of 10 of them with bolt rifles and two heavy bolters, assuming they get within 12 inches range after having moved, and on average they spit out these kind of numbers, around about 12 slain termigans, 9 wounds to enemy intercessors, around about 6 wounds to terminators, and around 4 or 5 wounds to enemy vehicles, I'd say the numbers are at least fairly good against things like termagants or intercessors, and as mentioned it would go up by that rather big 55% or so if they do attack the Oath of Moment target, so you could make those numbers significantly better that way. And I would bear in mind that it's only a bit more than half the story with that, as if they went on to make a charge after doing all that shooting, they could add a pretty significant amount of damage, particularly to any sort of medium or lighter infantry they'd be wounding on a 4+. Even against enemy terminators and things though, you'd average around about one more slain terminator between all their attacks and the power fist. They've definitely at least got a bit of threat in melee. Overall, between all that, they feel like a pretty interesting general purpose unit now. They're at least fairly dangerous in damage output, meaning that no unit can really just 100% ignore them, given that they're going to chip off a fair few devastating wounds each turn. That they are going to be a lot better against fighting with lighter or heavier enemy infantry as opposed to trying to take down tanks and vehicles, which isn't really their role. Certainly between their shooting damage, and then if they get a charge off after that, I'd say their damage output gets up to being good, and they back that up with having some fairly good character attachment options. For downsides, I'd say their durability is maybe just a little bit mid if you were going for a high investment sort of damage dealer style unit. Maybe not too surprising there, I wouldn't really say that's either a massive strength or weakness though. And I guess they do have the downside of needing to be delivered into 12 inch range for ideal threat, which they might struggle to do with a 6 inch move even if you can advance and shoot with most of the bolt rifles and things, meaning you might want a delivery system or transport vehicle. As they're in the Space Marine Codex as well, they do have a massive amount of competition with all the other units that you could use in a similar sort of role, intercessors in particular, which means that even if they're a fairly interesting choice, they'd also have to stand out against all the other stuff that you might field. Let's move on to a few things that could support the units from within Codex Space Marines though. Earth of Moment works for most things, but as mentioned it is particularly relevant for these guys, giving them a big damage boost. Could just be a little bit more tempting to use it to have them go after the Earth target as a result if it doesn't make more sense elsewhere. And besides that, they could make use of plenty of other good staples for Space Marine infantry. Armour of Contempt, the Grenade Stratagem, and the Overwatch. I guess Overwatch could be interesting if you did have a big unit of them with other things like character buffs. Otherwise, with any Space Marine ranged unit, Marine Firepower Synergy units could be alright if you had them, say a plus one to wound against vehicles from things like Storm Speeders, a plus one to hit from Incursors, or reroll wound rolls of one from the Combi Weapon Lieutenant. I feel like for various reasons though, they're maybe not the unit that you'd usually want to try and build around with those sort of things. Might be just a little bit more tempting for big hitting tanks and vehicles, or mid-strength things like Hell Blasters particularly for the vehicle things, seeing as they get lots more of their damage out of devastating wounds versus the plus one to wound. I think with their damage output and value, they're a pretty reasonable unit to put in transports. Maybe the Repulsor and the Impulsor are the most standout out of them. If you want a big 10-man squad delivered to the enemy, then the Repulsor itself looks like quite a good choice. You can fit 10 of them in there alongside character support if you want. Have it move into the midfield and deliver them to shooting range, and then you have the repulsor special rule that could defend them against enemy charges, which is exactly the sort of thing that they'd enjoy. I guess the impulsor could be fine for a unit moving into the midfield as a slightly higher investment one. I guess compared with things like intercessors, you are cramming a bit more damage value into that transport. Feels like they're another good match there on paper at least. You definitely could use other things like a drop pod or even a storm raven though. Both could be some slightly premium ways to get them into shooting range right from turn 1. For character support for the unit, there are a few choices that maybe seem a little bit more tempting than most. A captain could be okay if you're in certain detachments and want some stratagems for free. Though I feel like you probably want a big squad of 10 of them to justify him, and it might be a little bit at odds with his melee profile wanting to be more in combat, where the squad's generally going to more want to be at range. The Lieutenant could be interesting enough for lethal hits, allowing you to fall back and shoot if you do get tagged in combat, 
Again, maybe not the best use of his melee profile, and the lethal hits does have some anti-synergy with their devastating wounds as well. If you auto wound in the enemy, you get no chance to devastating wound, which could be a little bit counter-purpose. Weirdly enough, out of the generic characters, I feel like the Librarian might actually be one of the more interesting ones. Using the 4 plus invulnerable save with the Psychic Barrier does make the unit quite a lot tougher. It maybe feels like they're a squad a little bit more worth protecting compared with basic intercessors as well. And he could chip into a bit of damage dealing as well with his smite, which I feel like carries his weight against the rest of the squad with their devastating wounds with a whole bunch of mid-strength, mid-AP things. I feel like Stone Guard are perhaps a particularly interesting choice for quite a lot of the epic heroes out there throughout Codex Space Marines, perhaps particularly things that don't necessarily enormously want to be in a melee unit like Blade Guard. Just about every standard Space Marine character on foot can typically lead Stern Guard if they want to. For the Ultramarines, I feel like Chief Librarian Targiria seems like a maybe unusually good fit. Very cheap at 75 points, meaningfully increases the squad's damage with his Storm of the Emperor's Wrath. A very good Space Marine killing profile that could help out against Terminators and things a bit, wounding them on a 3+. Plus. And then he gives the squad a minus 1 to hit, a bit of defence against psychic attacks and mortal wounds, a little bit more melee. And then the rather fun option of getting some free overwatch each turn. Not too bad if you had a big unit with him in to threaten shooting the enemy in the midfield. Even hitting on sixes, that could add up to a fair bit more stats damage. Pedro Cantor maybe seems like worth a mention as well for 90 points. Perhaps almost as much as just because Sterngard feel like the iconic unit that he'd like to lead. He makes the unit a bit more dangerous as they take casualties, but also has the Von Oath of Rin special rule which means once per game you can get extra attacks on your weapons. Potentially that could be four shots out of each stern guard bolt rifle in the shooting phase, followed up by extra attacks in the fight phase. Could be a fairly spectacular amount of damage dealing, particularly with his own shooting and combat thrown in. Beyond characters, there's lots of interesting things for the detachments out there, perhaps partly because they're just a fairly general purpose space marine infantry that could both be okay as a utility unit or a biggish investment damage dealer. Most of the core detachments do have some draw to them. The Firestorm Assault Force seems to be a particularly good one for them. Getting to advance and shoot could help get them in range, and strength 5 bolters within 12 inches seems like quite a nice deal to me, even if some of their damage is coming from devastating wounds. Having a bunch of transport support stratagems works really well for them as well, jumping in and out of things like repulsors. The Gladius could allow you to advance and charge. Could be nice after hitting the enemy with a whole bunch of assault shots from the bolt rifles. Fall back and shoot is handy enough as well, and I guess he could use the fire discipline combo on them here, though again that maybe feels a little bit cross purposes with their devastating wounds, getting loads of lethal hits. Vanguard Spearhead gives you a lot of shooty marine support, cover and stealth at greater than 12 inches help survivability, and they could be nice for things like the plus one to hit and the extra AP stratagem that they've got. First Company will really like the big turn of reroll wound rolls for Oath of Moment. That's great on stat devastating wounds and could be absolutely monstrous for a full squad of Sternguard trying to take down that one target. And Sternguard, of course, are one of the veteran units that can make use of most of their stratagems. The Stormlance Task Force is better for melee things, but being able to advance, shoot and charge with their bolt rifles is actually kind of surprising how much far they could move and how much damage they could do. And even Iron Storm Spearhead definitely isn't wasted. Those rerolls will help. They could use Mercy as weakness, and it could be a good one for supporting any vehicles they happen to be mounted in, say like a Repulsor or a Storm Raven. Otherwise, for the Divergent chapters out there, maybe one of the most prominent might be the Dark Angels. I guess you could do 6 plus Feel No Pains with Black Templars, though I feel like they're competing with their Sword Brethren for fancy veteran damage dealers. Death Watch have got plenty of shooting synergies with their Black Spear Task Force, but they're going to be competing again directly against unique kill teams. And Space Wolves and Blood Angels are both a bit more melee focused on the whole. Most of their characters want to be leading close combat units if they get the choice. For Dark Angels though, I feel like there's a few other interesting things. They now get to be Deathwing if you use them in that detachment, which is kind of fun. And they would get a fair few range stratagem support in the Unforgiven Task Force. Maybe one of the most interesting characters to lead them as well could be Azrael. Who again, like Tigerius, seems to be one of the better characters to lead them. Azrael for 105 points, I feel like, brings just enormous value to whichever squad that he leads, even if it's just basic intercessors or fancy hellblasters. I think, again, he could be very well suited to Sterngard. He's got good combat damage in himself. He farms a command point each turn. He makes the unit massively tougher with a 4 plus invulnerable save. Gives them sustained hits 1 to boost their shooting, and that could be particularly nice if they ever need to overwatch. 
And then he also has that once per game 4 plus save against Mortal Wounds with the Watcher in the Dark. Doesn't hurt to have that if the opponent does choose to go after him. Seems like he get pretty good value out of most units. Maybe falling out of a repulsor or even just foot slogging up the board depending on the detachment. I guess it'd be a 300 point unit but really quite a dangerous and surprisingly durable one with a 4 plus invulnerable save. Not going to go down quite as easy as they would otherwise. Otherwise, out of Codex Space Marines, there are quite a lot of competitors, plenty of other flavours of Marine Bolter infantry. Intercessors bring their sticky objectives type rule and are a bit cheaper than the Stern Guard, though they are quite a lot less threatening on the damage front. Heavy Intercessors mean that you trade out a bit of damage for the durability, and they cost a little bit more. And Infernus Marines are cheaper and threaten Overwatch if you are looking for things to skirmish over midfield objectives. Otherwise, you could just go heavier on utility infantry like, say, scouts or incursors or infiltrators that all bring other fun special rules to the table. And if you are thinking about building around them as a mainline damage dealer unit, you'd be looking at all the other infantry units that you could do that with in Codex Space Marines. Hellblasters, perhaps Blade Guard Aggressors, Eradicators, or chapter specific stuff. There's a whole load of things that you could invest points on if you want to try and just destroy the enemy army. Overall, I feel like they're an interesting midpoint though. At 90 points, they feel like they're fairly viable both as damage dealers or as cheaper objective type skirmishers. I'd say if you just want a cheap utility unit though, maybe getting a unit of intercessors might outcompete them at the first port of call. Trading off a little bit of damage for that fairly nice sticky objectives rule is quite a nice to have to try and safeguard some victory points. Overall though, I think it's kind of nice to see Stone Guard looking really quite a lot more solid for Marines once more. It can be a bit disappointing when then some fancy new miniatures that quite a lot of people have in their collection now due to the Leviathan box and they aren't really that great. The drop to 90 points seems pretty fair. I feel like they could be pretty interesting with certain characters, maybe Azrael with a unit of them as his bodyguard or Tigerius with them jumping out of a repulsor. And I feel like taking a couple of five-man units in an army list doesn't seem like the worst idea either and have them just move forward to the midfield to be fairly scary damage dealers, but still aren't ridiculously easy to kill for their cost. In general, I'd say they're a unit you probably don't want to go too heavy on, given that they are a lot better against lighter infantry type units compared with heavy tanks and vehicles. You will need to back them up with some heavy guns to take down enemy armour, and in general you want to play with them perhaps a little bit more carefully than some things. You do want to try and make sure that they get their damage in on the enemy before they get damaged themselves, maybe more so than certain other Space Marine units that are a little bit more durable. You certainly feel like you're paying a bit more for their damage output compared with their toughness profiles, even if neither are awful. Ideally, I think that if the stars align, you'd really like for a unit to be able to both shoot a light or medium infantry unit and then charge into them and put all of those melee attacks into combat. If that happens against some semi-valuable enemy troops, you've probably justified their existence then and there. Might just be a little bit hard to line up given their slightly slow movement though. Overall, these guys definitely seem fun though. I think they're going to be a bit more viable for including in competitive lists once again, when previously they were ranked very low by a lot of people. I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts on the Stone Guard are though, and whether you'd be looking at their data sheets again, now they have gone down in points by quite a bit. In any case, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. How would you be tempted to use a unit and have they been working for you? Let me know all your thoughts and ideas. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I do tend to keep regular 40k videos coming pretty regularly on the channel. I tend to have new things coming out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.